about Easter from the Rich Family. Hi guys, it's Danielle here, um, and I just wanted to say Happy Easter, and I miss you guys, and I'm so excited to see you guys, and I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy. Hey CFFC, this is Reverend Bob and Sadie. We're here to wish you a happy Resurrection Day. We just wanted to say, He is risen. He has risen indeed. Hey church family, from the Violas to you, we just want to say, Happy, happy Resurrection Sunday. Sunday. He is risen. Hello, CFSC. We are the Nash family, and we want to wish you a blessed Easter. And we miss you very much. We hope we can see you soon, and have a good Easter. Hey, church family. We just wanted to say, Happy, Happy Easter. Easter! We love you, and we can't wait to see you guys soon. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everybody! everybody. We miss you guys so much, and we hope to see you real soon. Hello, church family. I'm Judy Streeter, coming to you from Somerset County. I hope all is well with you. I just want to take this opportunity to wish you a very happy Easter, a wonderful day. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon. Hey, church family, it's Jennings. We want to wish you a happy Easter. Hey, we miss you guys and love you guys. We sure hope to see you soon. God bless. Hey, church family, I'm Hannah, and from my family to yours, we wanted to wish you a happy Easter. He is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Hi everyone, the Ripley family here. We just want to wish you and your family a very happy Easter. Happy Easter, happy Easter from the Nervine family. Our family wants to wish you a happy Resurrection Day. Happy Easter. We hope you have a special day. Hey church family, happy Resurrection <laughs> Sunday. We are so excited. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. From our family, to your family, we wanted to wish you guys a happy Easter, a happy Resurrection Sunday. Happy Resurrection Sunday. So great to celebrate with you today. Amen. We're going to have church today, yeah. dressed up and in shouting for Jesus. <laughs> Love you. Hey, church family, hey. it's Easter. Glory to God. He is risen. He is risen indeed. <clears throat> you know, it's exciting to know that our King is risen. Amen. Yes. That our Jesus is not in the tomb no more that he is risen he is risen indeed, indeed. we want to wish you and your family a happy happy easter or a happy happy resurrection day glory to god jesus is risen because he is risen we are going to rise on that yes. day all of our loved ones are going to rise on that day it's going to be glorious so happy easter everyone we love you guys he is risen he is risen indeed a Man.
The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God is never late. He's working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. church family. We're going to receive communion at this time. I just thought it'd be special with this coronavirus going around and us not being able to get together like we normally do for Easter. Usually these are our biggest services of the year that we would receive communion together because we don't want this coronavirus, the COVID-19 coming into our home. And we believe that the body of Jesus Christ was broken for our healing. Amen. So if you have your little matzo there, your little wafer there, piece of bread, and your little grape juice or some drink there, just hold that. And then look at that little wafer. And as I pray, when I say that his body was broken, go ahead and break that little piece of bread. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you gave us your son. And because Jesus Christ suffered on the cross and his body was broken, that I could receive healing, Lord. Right now, I thank you for the Psalm 91 blessing of protection around my, myself, my family, our church family, and their families, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that as his body was broken, ours can be healed. I thank you, my Lord Jesus, that what you bore on the cross, we need not bear. Not only did you give us the forgiveness of sin through the shedding of your blood, but you gave us healing 
for our natural bodies and for our mind. So Lord, we thank you now that your body was beaten, bruised, so that ours could be healed. We receive this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we receive the cup right now, too. And we thank you that your blood was shed for the remission of our sins. We thank you that our sins are not just covered, but that our sins are washed away. And we thank you this day for that, Lord. We partake together and know because your blood was shed and your blood was given for us that we now have remission of sin. And we thank you for that. Reverend Bob, would you come on up at this time as we pray? Father, we thank you so much that our sins are washed away. We thank you so much that by your stripes we were healed. We receive that today, Lord. We love you. I pray for each and every person, members, attenders, guests, and anyone that's watching, wherever it might be, I thank you, Lord, for this covenant promise that we have of the forgiveness of sin washed away, the total redemption, spiritually, mentally, physically, socially, financially, in every area, all because of what Jesus Christ has done. Now those out there, go ahead and stretch your hands out towards Reverend Bob as he prays over you, prays over the prayer requests that have come in. Well, our Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that we remember why we come together to celebrate, Lord. Celebrate your suffering, but more importantly, celebrate your resurrection. The same resurrection power that raised Christ from the dead lives within our hearts. And Father, I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord God, that we send forth healing over every oh, Lord, person, you, every family member. We thank you, Lord God, that we live in that divine supernatural health of Almighty God. Yes, Father, I thank you that we are protected from these things of the world. Yes. You told us to be of good cheer, yes. for you have overcome the world. And now, Lord, we raise up our leaders, our president, our Congress, our vice president. Father, all these ones that are working on our behalf, Father, we just thank you for them. Protect them, guide them, lead them, give them wisdom. We pray for salvation for those that don't know you, Lord God, that they'll open their eyes and their hearts to you. And Father, we also <laughs> thank you. Thank you for every person that's out there right now in the front lines working for our health, for our goodness. Yes. Father, watching over our families in the hospitals, the nursing homes, Father God, any other place they may be. We also raise up before you every retail worker that's working in the stores and everything else, Lord, to supply us with our needs that we already know you've supplied. And Father, we give you glory for that. And Lord, also, we raise up our military, the ones that, Father, some of them haven't been home for over a year. Lord, we raise them up. We thank you for peace in our hearts. We thank you, Lord God, that you can touch them with your family love. And now also, Lord, we thank you that as a church family, as family of God, we can surround each other with your love and we can pour it out on each other at this time. And Lord, we don't take that for granted. We thank you for the love of Almighty God, for our Abba Father. And Lord, we just want to honor you, praise you, and bless you for all of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Reverend Bob. Amen. God is good. He is risen. Amen, brother? He has risen indeed. He has risen indeed. <laughs> amen.
Well, hello and welcome to CFFC Online. My name is Brandy and I want to welcome you to our Easter service here today. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, before we go any further, can we give our worship team a big shout out today? Didn't those guys do a great job? So drop them a shout out right there in the comments section. They really brought it today. Amen. So let's go ahead and say our vision together. So we are a praying church. We are a going church and we are a life changing church and we are reaching and impacting people with the love of Jesus. So just a few announcements, Miss Ashley and our Life Children's is going to have her Easter lesson up. So parents, check that out on the Life Children's page on Facebook. Also teens, uh, they are going to be having their Thursday and Sunday online services. That's at four o'clock. And then they have the Tuesday night, 6 p.m. nightly news. You don't want to miss that. Also, we put out a challenge to us. We can't be here today enjoying Easter together, but we put a challenge out. We want to be part of your Easter. So what we ask you to do is take a picture of your Easter dinner. Maybe take a picture of your kids doing an Easter egg hunt or opening gifts out of their Easter basket, whatever that might be. Take a snapshot of that and then upload it right there to our post, right on our CFFC page, and then go ahead and send those so that we can be part of your Easter celebration, amen? If you have a comment, a question, a concern, if you have a prayer request, go right to cffchurch.org and send those in. We miss you guys. Happy Easter. He is risen, amen. Let's continue to worship by the giving of his tithes and our offerings because we are a giving church. And here's the ways that you can give. You can go to cffchurch.org and click donate tab at the top of the page or on the link of this video. You can give on our CFFC app. You can text to give by texting the amount to 84321 or mail your check or cash to 3188 Route 94, Franklin, New Jersey, 07416. Well, happy Resurrection Day, family. I have a scripture, scripture for you today, and it's probably the most popular scripture in the world, I would say, and it's John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, we celebrate Easter today because over 2,000 years ago, God gave his absolute very best for us. He sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. And you know, this verse says that he so loved that he gave. You know, he loves his children. He wants to give to his children. Matter of fact, that's part of who God is. is he's a giver. It's in his DNA. It's, it's in his nature to give. And because of that, we want to give our very best today. You know, we want to give our very best in thanksgiving of our salvation. Um, Jesus, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. And Father, for giving your very best. So, Lord, we give our best to you today. And, you know, that's not even the most, most best part of it. You want to know something? As we take this offering today, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. And he's just waiting for God to say, go get your bride. Go get your church. You know, the best is yet to come, brothers and sisters. Let's praise him for everything. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, on this day that we can give to you, Father. Father, we give our best to you because you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy of all our praise and honor. Father, this little bit that we give, I pray you bless it, Lord. And Father, you use it to further your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, church family, it's Easter, glory to God. Again, he is risen, he is risen indeed. This morning we're going to get into the Word and we're going to look at Resurrection Sunday and the message is called All Because of Resurrection Sunday. So if you got your Bibles there, go ahead and open to John chapter 11 and verse 25 and 26. These are the great words that Jesus is speaking and he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Well, I believe it. How about you? 
It's because that he, it's because that he lives that I know that I have eternal life. That I will live with him for all eternity. Jesus He's the, the second Adam. He's the one that went before us. He's the one that defeated death, hell, the grave, all of that. And it's because of him that we're going up. Amen? I like how Paul brings this out in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 12, 13, and 14. He makes a statement here. And you got to really think about what he's saying. Because throughout all of history, People have so believed in the resurrection of Christ, so believed in what Jesus Christ has done that they were willing to die for. And let me tell you something. I don't know if I'd be willing to die for a fable. I better know that I know that I know that I know that it's real. And Paul made this statement. Now, if Christ is preached that he had been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith also is empty. Church family, I want to say today, our preaching and our believing is not in vain. Our Jesus is risen. He is risen from the dead. You can go to Jerusalem today. You can be an investigative reporter and you can go there and study it out, and you'll find out that there was this man. His name was Jesus. He walked the streets of Galilee. He walked the streets of Jerusalem. He walked the streets of Nazareth. And our Jesus was laid in a rich man's tomb. And that tomb is still there today. And you can go to Golgotha. Here we are 2,000 years later, and it still looks like a skull to this day. Oh, no, he came. Oh, no, he died for my sins and your sins. And on this Easter day, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Look what the angel said. I want us to look at Mark chapter 16 and verse 6 and also Matthew chapter 28. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 6, they said, and he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. What is that place? It's that empty tomb, guys. It's knowing that there's an empty tomb to give witness. Oh, all these other so-called gods in this world, they got a tomb. They know where they're buried or, or on and on. But our Jesus, we know where he was buried, but he ain't buried no more. Amen. Think about it. Right now, the Jewish people are going through their Passover. It started Wednesday night, and it goes for, for eight days after, right? And what was that? They're looking at the, the blood of the Lamb. Well, we looked at the blood of the Lamb. We looked at it on Good Friday, that our Jesus Christ was slain, that we might have redemption. And not only was he slain there on Good Friday, but he is risen. He is risen indeed. In Matthew 28, beginning with verse 1, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Madeline, I'm looking forward to meeting Mary Madeline, and the other Mary, I'm looking forward to meeting her too. Is that neat? Is that no matter if somebody died, George Washington, you know, 200 and what years ago, or a Mary Madeline that died 2,000 years ago, or an Abraham that died over 4,000 years ago, we're going to meet them all because there's no death in Christ. We live in him. If you've lost loved ones, I don't care if you lost them today, you lost them uh, uh, 50 years ago, my grandparents of old, on and on, I'm going to get to meet them one day. Amen. Mary Madeline and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven. We're going to see the angels of the Lord. Amen. Ooh, glory to God. And they came and rolled back the stone from the door. And he sat on it. So you can picture this angel. He pushed his stone to the side. And he's just sitting on it. That's kind of cool. Isn't it a church family? His countenance was like lightning. You know, right now I think it would be a little hard to look at an angel. But when we receive our glorified bodies, 
we're going to have glorified eyes too, amen? And we're going to be able to see angels. We're going to be able to look upon God's face. That's mind-boggling to me. So go ahead and type there on the comments, I'm getting a glorified body. Hallelujah. And it says here, his clothing was white as snow, and the guards shook for fear of him. You bet you they shook for fear of him, of this angel. And they became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Would you please write that in the comments? He is risen. And somebody else after that write, He is risen indeed. And the angel said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly. Notice that he didn't say, Go slow about this. No, he said, Go quickly. And tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. we got to remember, one of his disciples hung himself, Judas, right? Peter, we know, was in deep mourning. And the angel was saying, go tell him quickly, he is risen. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. And there you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Wow. Wouldn't you have liked to have been there on Easter Easter morning, or would you like to have been the old expression, you know, a fly on the wall to see all of that? I believe that God, you know, I used to say it like this. I believe that God has a great Super 8 camera, and he's recorded all this. Then I started saying, I believe God has a VCR tape, so we'll be able to see all this. Then I started saying, I believe God has DVDs, and we'll be able to see all this. Now I say, I believe God has it all in the cloud. And we'll be able to see all this. We'll be able to see resurrection morning. We'll be able to see our Lord who died on, that, on the cross. We'll be able to look up in heaven and see the mercy seat and see his blood that, is, that has been shed for you and for me. Amen? So the resurrection of, of our Lord Jesus Christ meant a new life for each and every one of us. And as we look at that resurrection day and all that happened, we can see that we as Christians have received many blessings for that day. And I just want us to look at a few of them this morning. So if you want to get a little paper there, jot some of these thoughts down and keep them before you. Look at, because, number one, because of the resurrection, we today have forgiveness of sin. We today have received the pardon from Almighty God. We today have no condemnation, no verdict of guilt, whatsoever. Romans 8, 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. I am in Christ Jesus. If you're in Christ Jesus, give a wave there. We're in Christ Jesus, and because of that, there is no verdict of guilt to us. So this word pardon means the act of excusing a mistake or an offense. God has excused our mistakes and our offenses. It is the formal act of liberating someone, a warrant is granting release from punishment for an offense. I know like presidents and governors, they give pardons. And in that pardon, when that person is pardoned by the president of the United States or the governor of a state, it's done. They're free. They're let out of that jail like they've never done anything and they can walk around liberated and free. In God, amen? Let's just look at a few scriptures here. In Ephesians 1, 7, it says, In him we have redemption through his blood. We just received communion. We have redemption through his blood. We have the forgiveness of sins. Why? According to the riches of his grace. Guys, it's not about what we've done. We need to get that in our mind. It's not what I've done. It's not what you've done. It's what Jesus Christ has done. What he did on that cross and then rising from the dead on that third day. That's what it's all about. It's not about how good I am. It's not about how, how worthy I am or look how much money I gave or look how many times I'm in church or all that. And these are all good things and we should have good works. But salvation is a free gift and it's all about what Jesus Christ has done. And when I accept fully what Jesus has done, I can learn to live in that rest. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He that dwelleth in Jesus. Mm, I like it. Psalm 86.5 says, 
For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. You are abundant in mercy to all those that call upon you. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I have called upon him, and he has washed me of my sin. Or as it says in Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgression for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Now, just stay with that just for a moment. Because, you know, some of you write in and, and you say, oh, you know, how do I get rid of my sins? I always feel this guilt. Oh, I, I just feel like I'm no good, that God wouldn't accept me, that if I were to die right now, I don't know if I would get to heaven. Guys, those are lies of the enemy. Those are lies. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. My Bible says he was a liar from the beginning. Here it says God will not remember our sins anymore. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then because of Easter morning, because of the resurrection, your sins are washed away, glory to God. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And you can start enjoying Abba Father, and you can start enjoying your elder brother, and you can start enjoying the parakletos, the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us to be our helper in this life. Amen? So say this with me. He will not remember my sins anymore. So even if you messed up today, just thank God for his forgiving power. It says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. God isn't keeping a record of every sin. Every one of our sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. So when we make it, when we make a mistake, it's like a husband and wife saying, hey, I'm sorry, and that's all we're doing. Lord, I'm sorry, but I thank you. I'm still married to Diane, even when I make mistakes, and I make plenty of them, and she's still married to me, and she never makes any mistakes because she's perfect. No, we all make mistakes, amen? And here's what he's saying. I will not remember your sins anymore. Number two, because of the resurrection, catch this now. We now have peace with God. You have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ has done on that cross. Oh, pastor, my mind doesn't seem to have peace. Well, then you better start accepting it. It's a free gift that God has given to you. Go over to Romans 5.1. I want you to see exactly what this verse says. While you're turning there, I'm going to read John 14.27. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. I have made a decision in my life. I'm not going to lose peace. Now, don't get me wrong. When I mess up, I talk to God. God, you know, I, I was lazy today. I, I, I spent too much time doing this. I should have been doing this. You talk to the Lord about it. But it doesn't bring me out of peace. His peace, his shalom is complete. It is upon me. So today, on this Easter day, if your mind is all over the place, Ask him for his peace. Go ahead and write that in on comments. I have his peace because of Jesus Christ. Here's what it says in Romans 5.1. Therefore, having been justified, what does justified mean? Just as if I've never sinned. How are we justified? By faith. See, either I believe it or I won't have it. Faith is believing even when you don't see it. I don't always feel righteous. I don't always feel right. But I have to accept that because if I didn't accept it, I've made Jesus Christ a liar. And let God be true and every man a liar. And God is not a man that he should lie. Amen? And the Lord, you know, the scripture also says, I change not. If he said he forgave me 2,000 years ago, then I am just as forgiven today. Therefore, having been justified by faith, I have peace with God. How? Through my Lord Jesus Christ. I have peace with God today because of what Jesus Christ has done. This is that in him reality. This is knowing that I know that I know because he is risen, he is risen indeed. I have peace with God. I have forgiveness of sin. Number three, because of the resurrection, 
I am free from sin. In other words, I have been forgiven from sin, number one, but now I am free from the effects of sin. The effects of sin are not good, brothers and sisters. The effects of sin are condemnation. The effects of sin are, are, are the wages of the law. And I can go on and on what, what the effects of sin does. But look what it says in Romans 6.14. In Romans 6.14, it says this. For sin shall not have dominion over me. For I am not under law, but under grace. You can put in that bad habit you have right there. For a temper shall not have dominion over me. For I am not, not under law, but under grace. For overeating shall not have dominion over me. What a thing to say on Easter, right? Enjoy your meal. For, for, for sin shall not have dominion over me. For I am not under law, but under grace. Go down to verse 18. And having been set free from sin, did you notice what it says? We are free from sin. And what happens is, the reason I believe people sin so much, Christian people, good people, is they're always thinking about sin. Oh, I blew it. I messed up. I smoked that cigarette again. I, I yelled at the dog again. I, I did this. I did that. Look, sin shall not have dominion over me. I got to stop being so sin conscious and be more sonship conscious. I need to think about Jesus more than I think about my sin because he washed away my sin. Again, Romans 6, 18. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I like being a slave of righteousness. What does righteousness give me? It gives me right standing with God. I think it's the NLT that says it. I have been made right with God. Wow. Think about that. Think about that if, if you, let's just say you and your son or you and your daughter have been in strain now, you know, have, have been separated, let, let's say for 10 years, you didn't talk, you don't even know where she lives anymore, yet, yet when that last time you were together, it was a big fight and they, they, they took off and that was the end. And then all of a sudden, you get a knock on the door, hi dad, hi mom. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The prodigal son. We're back in there. That's us with God. I was separated from God because of my sins. Sin has separated me from my God. Now many want to say sin still separates me from my God. Not while I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. You're telling me sin is stronger than the blood of Jesus Christ? No, the blood of Jesus Christ is stronger than any sin. I don't care what sin you've committed. You go to him. He loves you. He forgives you. And the more you think about him, the less you're going to sin. The more you accept this, for we are not under law, but under his grace, his undeserved, unearned favor. Well, the more you ponder on that, the more sin has less of an effect on you. If you want to keep on sinning as a Christian, what do you do? think about sin all the time. You want to start having a close relationship with he that is risen? Think about him all the time. That's the power of the in him scriptures, that we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's all because of what Jesus Christ has done. Get that. That's the rest. That's why the Bible says, you know, you got to work to enter the rest. Why is there a work to enter the rest? Because this mind has to get renewed to know that I'm accepted by God. I'm accepted in the beloved. I am complete in him who is the head of all things. I am perfect in him. Now, again, when I say that word perfect, don't get all bent out of shape. I'm not talking about this flesh. We're still working on that thing. But our spirit man is born again. Our spirit man is brand new, <clears throat> excuse me, in him. Number four, because of the resurrection, today, we have power. Power! Power! Wonder-working power. That word power. Dunamis power. Explosive power. Where we get the word dynamite from. Go to Romans 8.11. 8.11. But if the spirit of him, you remember how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth 
with the Holy Spirit and with power. So Jesus was anointed and we are anointed. Amen. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. Oh, saints, I want to get that across to you on this Easter day. He is risen. Oh, type it in there again. Put a bunch of hearts right there. Let some hearts go up. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, one more time. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the same spirit that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead now dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your spirit man. No, it's not what it says there, is it? To our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. That spirit is living inside you. That spirit gives health to our bodies. If you're suffering with something right now, say thank you, Holy Spirit, for that life-giving spirit just oozing through my legs, oozing through my liver, oozing through my heart. Coronavirus, you can't come on this body in Jesus' name. That same spirit that raised Christ from the dead put his power within you. Amen. Number five, we're almost done. Because of the resurrection, we have his awesome presence. Now, I've shared this scripture a few times in the last few weeks, but I love it. It's, it's Hebrews 13, 5, and it's the second part here. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. The amplified version. I will not, I will not, I will not leave you nor forsake you. <laughs> you notice it doesn't say there, I will not leave you unless you're a bad boy or girl. I will not leave you unless you do this or do that. He said, no, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That, my brothers and sisters, is in our New Testament. That's under our new covenant, our new agreement with God because of what he has done. I love in Matthew 28, Jesus said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Now watch what he says here. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It's not the end of the world, brothers and sisters. If there's an age coming, this world system is coming to an end. Me and Diane were talking the other day. This world is beautiful. We want to see this world restored. Thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. I love planet earth. I love the adventure of planet earth. I love the beauty of planet earth. I love the sky, the moon, the stars, the sun. I love the green grass. I love the trees. I love the animals. I love the fish. I love the oceans. I love the ponds. I love the streams. I love the lakes. I go on and on and on and on and on. But I don't love this world system. Oh, no. It's evil. It has an antichrist spirit in it. And we know the, the true Antichrist is coming on the scene. But John said there are many Antichrists in this world. What is an Antichrist? Anything that goes against God, goes against his word. Amen? And we see that all over the place. People want to deny Christ. You can't even say his name in public. Thank God we could say it more now than we could five, six, seven, eight years ago. Thank you, Jesus. His name is Jesus. Go ahead and say it right there. Type it in. Jesus, put a nice exclamation mark after that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We can say his name, but that Antichrist spirit wants Jesus out of the schools, wants Jesus out of the political system, wants Jesus out of every home. Well, you know what? My Bible says that the Lord shall return, amen, with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we shall be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with him. Therefore, comfort ye one another with these words. When we're taken out of here, this world is going to get a little taste of what it's like to not have any salt or, or light in this world, not have any Jesus for a while. Thank God. Many will be born again, but you understand what I'm trying to say. That's why it's so important to know him now, our Jesus. He is always with us, even to the end of this age here. And in saying that, I want to come to my last point. Because of the resurrection, mm -mm -mm. because of the resurrection, we now have 
salvation. Because of what Jesus Christ has done. You think about it, brothers and sisters, in the Old Testament, when they died, they went into Abraham's bosom. They went into the place of the dead there, amen, waiting for the Messiah. But, oh man, my Bible says over in the book of Ephesians that Jesus went down into the bowels of the earth and he released everyone from Abraham's bosom. Can you picture David being released? Can you picture Moses being released? All the saints of old were released. Oh man, that must have been a glorious day. I hope it's all recorded in the clouds so we can watch them. Seeing the Messiah coming down there, he made a show of the devil's triumphing over them in it. He eliminated the handwriting of the ordinances that were against us. He led captivity captive, and he gave gifts to men. Oh, pastor, you're excited on this Easter. I'm excited every time I think about my Jesus. Oh, life has its struggles. Life has its problems. It has its tests, its trials, its tribulations. But this life is coming to an end. Glory to God. And we're going to see him. What a glorious day it's going to be. But now we have salvation. In John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Brothers and sisters, those that are out there that might not understand salvation, there is only one way to get to heaven. It doesn't matter if you're a Catholic, a Protestant. It doesn't matter what religion you are. What matters is do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he died on the cross and that he rose on the third day? That's what it says here. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father <clears throat> except through me. Man, I've accepted that free gift. How about you? If you have, put a couple hearts out there. I've accepted that free gift today. The most famous scriptures, that, uh, of, of, the most famous statement ever made on planet Earth is John 3, 16. And I like putting 17 in there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, any whoever's out there, if you're a whoever, would you type in, I'm a whoever? Or just type in whoever? I was a whoever. And God met me. If you're there today and you're listening to this, you don't know how you came to this, this uh, internet broadcast, but you're there. I don't care if it's on Easter Day. It's two months from now. It's the anointed word of God. God loves you that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes, you have to believe on the son of God. It's a free gift, but it still requires a believing because God, he's given us free will that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. We were condemned already. We're condemned through Adam. Everything in this life operates through a seed. Every tree, every animal, and humans, we come through the seed, and we came through a bad seed. His name was Adam, Eve. But thank God today, we come through a good seed. His name is Jesus, hallelujah. For God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This morning, if you're here and you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord, to be your Savior, then I want to read to you right from the Word of God <clears throat> how it says to be saved. Christians, as you're watching this morning, pray. Pray for our service, but pray for every service that's going on today because we're believing that throughout this coronavirus, what the devil has brought in for bad, God is going to turn it around for good that there is going to be an amazing awakening throughout our land. We're already seeing it. We're seeing glimpses of it. People on their knees, people praying from rooftops. Amazing what's going on. <laughs> Devil, take that. But in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness or right standing with God. And with the mouth, 
Confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Do you believe in him today? Then you'll not be put to shame. That's what the Bible says. Oh, pastor, I don't know. My mind tells me something. That, it's not about your mind. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is not just for healing. Faith is not just to meet our, 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 our financial needs. or our, our, our Faith is every aspect of our... Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you're, sit, you're there today and you're saying, well, I don't think I'm saved, that's not faith, brothers and sisters. Faith is saying, I can't save myself, but God gave me a free gift. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to confess Jesus with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. Therefore, I shall be saved. And in Romans 10, 13, it says, Forever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we're going to do that today. If you have never asked Jesus to come into your heart, to be your Lord, to be your Savior, then I want you to make that decision today. Oh, what an Easter day. This would be to ask the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come into your heart. If you're just not sure, whatever, then pray this prayer. We'll all, we'll all pray it together. <laughs> Amen. I say that up here. But type it. I'm praying with you, Pastor. I'm praying with you, Pastor. But go ahead and say this with me. My dear God in heaven, I believe today that Jesus Christ, he died on the cross. I believe today that Jesus not only died on the cross, but on the third day, he rose from the grave. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord, be my Savior. I thank you today for forgiving me of all my sins and washing me even of the sin of the sin nature. Thank you today that I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, man, if you made that decision today on Easter Day, woo what a day to remember. The same way he rose from the grave, you rose from the grave. You were dead in your sins and trespasses before God. You had no way to get in. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father by, but by me. Jesus said, I am the door. Any man that steps in, will be received. You made that decision today. If that's you, let us know. Please call the church. Leave a message there. We'll get to it. Or just type, just send an email to RevBob, R-E-V-B-O-B -B at cffchurch.org. R-E-V-B-O-B -B at cffchurch.org. Or right there, you can let us know. He's on right there. He can write back to you. You guys can make a connection. Amen? Oh, it's the greatest thing. When I got saved over 40 years ago, it was the greatest thing. Diane, come on over here. Because Diane has been saved a long time too. Wasn't it the greatest thing ever, Diane? Amazing. It's an amazing, it's amazing. thing, guys. Yeah. It's the God greatest so thing you could ever, ever do. What a way to celebrate Resurrection Woo! Day. What a way to re celebrate resurrection morning when yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. rose from the dead. Amen. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. So listen, I want to pray over you. Diane is going to pray a blessing over you. But for myself and Diane, we want to wish you and your family a happy, happy Easter, a happy resurrection day. Amen, Diane. Amen. Amen. God is Amen. good. God is so good. Oh, he is so good. Why don't you go ahead and bless. Sure. The, the, just close your eyes, receive this blessing this morning. The Lord bless you, keep you, protect you, sustain you, and guard you. Yes, Lord. The Lord make his face shine upon you with favor mm. and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you with divine approval and give you peace, a tranquil heart and life. We confess that, that we, we are, are the head, head and, and not the, the tail. tail. We, we are, are above only and not beneath. That in all our ways and endeavors, we are greatly blessed, highly favored, and deeply loved. We are blessed to be a blessing. Hey, church family, before we say goodbye, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Amen.
this isn't a fable. This isn't a fairy tale. Jesus Christ truly came. There is more written about him. There is more art about him. There is more songs about him. I can go on and on and on. And again, if he would have died on Good Friday and never rose, we would barely be talking about him today. But because of Easter morning, he is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. From our family to your family and to everyone out there in internet land, <laughs> Happy Resurrection Sunday, happy, happy Resurrection. Resurrection Weekend, and happy, happy Easter. God bless. God bless.